Hi, you've clicked on to today's Tropical Tidbit for Wednesday, August 20th. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service, not me. Well, here's the Atlantic. I just want to make a quick video. Might not end up being so quick, we'll see. Uh, updating on Invest 96L, which has really become a subject of interest. There's been a lot of hype going on with this system and a lot of uh, uh, public exposure about a possible storm uh, coming at land areas and there's been a lot of false hype and false certainty about the future of this system. I just want to remind everyone how much we actually do not know about large disorganized elongated systems of this type because we talked yesterday about this monsoon trough in here and uh, we said yesterday that over the next few days a long process of this trying to consolidate into something smaller than what it currently is will be taking place and we already see that relative to yesterday um, it's not as spread out this far like we had it it's now a little bit smaller but still very elongated two centers one here another vort max up to the northeast and uh, until we see a system consolidate into a singular location and actually develop there are many unanswered questions and it doesn't matter how smart you are it's usually going to be uncertain and what we see is the model tracks have shifted since yesterday and they're, they're no longer here into the Gulf of Mexico they're farther to the north and this paints an unrealistic picture of how certain we are it takes an experienced eye to track what the forecast tendency is and right now this envelope it looks tight doesn't it it looks like there's model agreement on a track over Hispaniola towards South Florida that's not necessarily the case here's an example the European ensembles the, the purple colors indicate uncertainty in the model and to basically illustrate to you where TCs are likely to be tropical cyclones and you, you see anywhere from Bermuda to the Yucatan Peninsula in six days it's a huge spread and again it takes experienced eyes to know how uncertain or certain a forecast is so that's why you have to listen to the National Hurricane Center and what they're saying and that's why they only go so far as to say that there's a medium chance of development of this system in this general area during the next five, uh, two to five days. They're not going to tell you where it might make landfall later or if it'll make landfall at all because there's too many unanswered questions when it comes to that. Now if we look at the system today, uh, we do see convection going off and we see it starting to consolidate uh, like we talked about yesterday because this northern part is coming to the west and it's starting to support what was already here yesterday. The official center, if you will, of the disturbance is said to be right here. But this vorticity maximum to the north, this is something we see a lot where they get elongated southwest to northeast and the northern vorticity maximum usually ends up winning uh, because it's rubbing up against the trade winds to its north and that acts to focus convergence. And you, so usually the northern side wins and right now the models are fighting over which part of this storm becomes the primary source of convergence and becomes the dominant center and eventually perhaps the center of a storm over the next few days. So the models are changing and until they can latch on to exactly where this goes in the short term, the long term track will also be suspect. Now, uh, here's the GFS uh, ensemble, mean 500 millibar height and anomaly, 60 hours out. Our system is here. You can kind of see the wave bump in the ISO hips here. Uh, it's north of Puerto Rico um, on this model now. And you see a lot of the tracks now take it near Puerto Rico. Now, this is different than down here in the Central Caribbean Sea, like we said yesterday. And I want to issue a caveat to what I said yesterday. I made a comment that systems down here in the Caribbean are generally hard to recurve out to sea without touching North America in August, uh, mid to late August. And that is true, but if we have the system moving into the northern islands instead, that's not really buried in the Caribbean anymore, and that gives this trough that's hanging down here underneath this block east of Hudson Bay, this trough has more time to influence the system, and therefore the recurve is on the table. In fact, some model runs have indeed recurved this without touching land outside of the Caribbean islands, which it is guaranteed to impact in some way. So if it, again, this depends on Genesis location. We have this whole area out here in which it could form. You see it right now. If the center here becomes dominant and moves into the Caribbean like this, it's going to hit somebody. It's going to hit somebody in here. If instead this becomes really dominant and moves to the north uh, right along the islands, then we open the door for it to actually recurve into this trough. But even then, the story is not over because uh, this trough here, remember, if enough time goes by, by day six, this trough will eventually start moving out and this ridge builds over the top. And you see on the ensemble mean it has a piece here and a piece here. So half the members are sh showing it escaping. 
The other piece ends up in the Bahamas, and if it's a slow-moving, weaker system that gets perhaps entangled with Hispaniola, if you have a storm in here in the southeast Bahamas with a ridge building over top, I mean, it's over. It's going to hit land. So the door isn't... None of the doors are closed, okay, with this system. There's still a lot of uncertainty, and there's no way to get around that until we see a defined storm form somewhere in here, or perhaps even farther west, we're just not going to know for sure. So that's why we observe the tropics are notoriously unpredictable, so you always have to be prepared and pay attention to the official word, not pages and websites that are driving hype in order to scare you to generate views on their page. That's just wrong. Always pay attention to the official word and you will be just fine as long as you have a hurricane plan if you're in the path of systems like this. Again, large envelope of moisture will bring probably heavy rains to these mountainous areas regardless of development or not. And so Hispaniola, Puerto Rico, Cuba, the typical areas that are prone to flooding and mudslides, that is a worry with a large system like this that is moving slowly. And for folks to the west, still something to just keep a wary eye on. Nothing to really worry about yet. Not an imminent threat for sure. It's several days, uh, if not more, maybe even more than a week away from impacting the United States if it comes that far. And again, we will just have to track it to see if it does develop into a tropical storm. And if it does, then we will start to get a better idea of exactly how it will behave. So uh, we will keep an eye on this during the next few days. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.